Next, we will check the maximum punching shear at the column perimeter. This is the third shear plane that we need to check. So far, we have done checking the shear resistance at 1D shear plane. And also for the punching shear at 2D parameter, we found that the punching shear at 2D will not happen since the shear plane fall outside of the pack footing. There is one more punching shear that you need to check, which is along the parameter of the column. We need to make sure that the column does not punch through the pack footing due to excessive Asia loops with the influence of the moment acting in the minor axis. First, we need to get the shear loop. The maximum punching shear will have the shear loops equals to the total Asia loops due to the column, which in this case the ultimate Asia loops is equal to 1000 kN. And then we need to get the parameter of the punching shear maximum, which is equal to the parameter of the column. The width of the column 300 times 150. The parameter it will be 2 times 300 plus 2 times 150. You get the column parameters equals to 900 mm. Having the VED of 10, having the parameter U0 of 10, we need the effective depth. We will use the average effective depth of the major and the minor axis, which is equals to 488 mm. And then we need to consider this beta. This beta will define the influence of the moment acting onto the pack footing, affecting the punching shear stress at the column parameter. We need to get the K here, which is based on this table on the basis of C1 to C2 ratio. What is this C1 and C2? You may refer to the figure here. Identify the rotation directions of the moment. C1, it will be the width of the column parallel to the moment. Whereas C2, it will be the width of the column perpendicular to the moment. In our case, we have moment acting in the minor axis. Your C1 now it will be equals to 150mm and C2 it will be equals to 300mm as defined here. Get the ratio of C1 per C2. 150 divided by 300 equals to 0 0.5. Refer to the table here. C1 to C2 ratio of 0 0.5, you have K equals to 0 0.45. This is how you get the K equals to 0 0.45. Having the K of 10, now you need the moment. The moment is acting in the minor axis, where else there is zero moment in the major axis. Therefore, if we are talking about the major axis, this whole thing will be equal to zero due to zero moment, and the beta will be equal to 1.0. That's why the beta for the major axis equals to 1.0. As for the minor axis, MED is equal to 150. VED is the Asia load, which is 1000 kilonewton. You have your U0, which is 900 mm. Your K equals to 0 0.45. And then you need W1. The formula for W1 for the maximum share, it will be this. Don't confuse with the formulas of the W1 with the punching shear at 2D perimeter. 
use this formula substitute C1 and C2 into the equations C1 is equal to 150 C2 equals to 300 you get your W1 in the minor axis substitute into the equations you get your beta equals to 2.08 use the beta multiply VET divided by U0 divided by average effective depth you get shear stress equals to 4.74 because of the moment in the minor axis the maximum punching shear stress increases you may also check the punching shear stress in the major axis since you have no moment your beta equals to 1 so your shear stress it will be equally distributed next you will need to check your shear stress against your shear resistance the formulas to get the shear resistance is given here you know that this formula is not given in the euro code what is given in the euro codes are these formulas later after derivations you obtain this final formula in our calculations we use straight this formula the partial factor of safety of the concrete equals to 1.5 and the alpha cc is equals to 1.0 fck given which is 30 newton per mm square you get your maximum shear stress equals to 5.28 this VRD max is the resistance of shear which to be compared with the shear load your resistance is greater than the shear load now you know that the maximum punching shear at the column parameter pass having this completed now you know that all three types of shear for the pack footing passes we're going to deal with the other serviceability requirement, particularly in terms of the cracking control. You need to check the thickness of the pack footing, which in this case is 550 mm thickness. This thickness is more than 200 mm. That means you require the crack control measures on the side surface of the pack footing provide reinforcement surrounding the side of the pack footing with a spacing not exceeding 200 mm the function here is to control cracking of the surface of the pack footing next you also need to check the maximum spacing in order to prevent the cracking at the surface of the pack footing this you need to calculate both for the major and the minor axis you may refer to table 7.3 n in euro code 2 find the steel stress and to determine the maximum bar spacing assuming that we would like to control the great wave within 0.3 mm how do you determine the steel stress it is based on this formula what you see here there is a ratio between the quasi permanent against the ultimate limit state however in this example we only have the information about the ultimate load no information given regarding the quantum of the gk and the qk not knowing the quantum or GK and QK, we cannot get the exact ratio between the quasi-permanent load against the ultimate load. So what we will do, we will assume a ratio of 0 0.6 to represent this ratio. And then we get the ratio of FYK divided by partial factor of safety of the steel, which is 1.15. You may also incorporate the ratio between the reinforcement bar provided The AS required divided by AS provided 
refers to our previous calculations in terms of the moment resistance. The AS required are this and the AS provided are this. Get the AS required divided by AS provided for both major and minor axis. And then you work out the steel stress. The calculated steel stress shall be checked against the table here. Do some interpolations to get the maximum bar spacing. Through the interpolations, the maximum bar spacing in the major axis is 298 mm and in the minor axis is 176 mm. A smaller value is chosen limiting the maximum bar spacing in both axes. This limiting bar spacing shall be checked against the actual bar spacing. How do you get the actual bar spacing? You can take the width of the pack footing minus the concrete cover both sides. That means 2 times C nominal minus half bar size here, another half bar size here that give you one unit of the bar divided by total numbers of bar minus one let's say in this case you have 16 units of reinforcement bar and there will be 15 units of spacing between that 16 units of reinforcement bar. That's why you need to get the N minus 1. The width here, it will be based on the axis. Now, if you are talking about this reinforcement bar, the width, it will be this. And if you are talking about this reinforcement bar, this will be the width. If you find difficulty to imagine, you can always sketch. You don't have to memorize the equations. And then the calculated spacing, it will be the center to center distance between the reinforcement, which is calculated somewhere near to 150. And then the spacing is checked against the maximum spacing. The maximum spacing is not exceeded. Then we know that the provided amount of reinforcement bar is adequate to control surface cracking of the pack footing, particularly at the soffit of the pack footing. Once this is done, you know that every single aspect has already passed, including the soil bearing pressure not being exceeded the moment resistance given by the reinforcement adequate, the AS provided fall between the AS min and the AS max, the shear resistance at the plan of 1D from column phase pass, the punching shear at parameter 2D will not happen since this parameter 2D goes beyond the pad footing area. The maximum punching shear at the column parameters also pass and then the crack control are adequate. Then you can conclude the size of the pack footing as well as the amount of reinforcement bar provided. This is the size of the pack footing that was checked and 16 units of H12 rebar are placed in both the major and the minor axis. Their spacings are calculated. And then don't forget about the requirements in terms of the two thirds of the reinforcement. Shall concentrate at the bandwidth of C plus 3D in the short directions. This is due to this requirement. When we talk about a rectangular pack footing, the moment might not be transferred effectively in the transverse directions while providing the reinforcement. Make sure two thirds of the total reinforcement shall concentrate within the region 
of C plus 1.5D and 1.5D at the both sides. We are talking about the reinforcement bar in the shorter directions. Which in this case, let's say this is the orientations of the column. Your pet footing orientations it will be something like this. Now you have to make sure the arrangements of the reinforcement bar two third in the short directions fall within the middle C plus 3D distance. With that, this concludes the design example of the pet footing having the Asian loop plus the moment in the minor axis.